Good morning. Waiting to become your welcome to the day. It's morning to the patty. Right here on News Talk K57. It's now before the top of the hour. We uh, already blew through most of uh, the 7 o'clock hour, and we're so happy uh, to go through the rest of the hour, spending it with uh, the uh, CEO of the Guam Regional Medical City, Margaret Bangzon, in the studio with us, along with Kevin Kerrigan uh, as well. Good morning. Good morning, Patty, and good morning to all your listeners. It's so long since I've seen you. I know. The last time I saw you <laughs> were riding in an elevator together. There's, oh, goodness. There's nothing, there's nothing like feeling more in touch with something when you're riding in the elevator with the CEO of a major <laughs> hospital. Uh, that was pretty cool. It was the first time I'd been uh, to GRMC, and uh, it, it, you can get lost in the place. But you can. It's pretty big. It's pretty big. It's pretty impressive. I, you know, if I'm going to get sick, <laughs> you know what I mean? It's it, it's kind of it's hard to pitch the hospital because you know what it's about. I mean, the hospital is where sick people go. Uh, but the amenities and, and all of the trappings make it a little more comfortable. Well, it, it's Easy. More, more than that, actually. It's really about the people. It's really about the the specialty physicians and providers that we've been able to bring onto the island mm -hmm. because you know building the building buying the equipment is one thing but but you need the expertise yeah and that's what we're really proudest of we have to build a really really champion team yeah well the team building specialty care absolutely the team building i got to witness that day because i was there doing something else but i saw the halloween costume contest oh goodness <laughs> yeah that, that was the and i had to walk through that that was pretty impressive on its own um the the I was at the I had the occasion to go to GMH uh, emergency room uh, with somebody unfortunately recently and I had asked them about you know what's it been like in here since the hospital they said a lot of the a lot of the strain on GMH is has been taken off and they were grateful that there is another hospital that can take off some of the load well clearly clearly from the very beginning I mean it was it was necessary that GMC come in to partner with GMH I mean we, we know we knew the situation of GMH before GMC came in is you know you know constant chronic um, over occupancy uh, of the operating rooms of the floors and and um, you know, there's 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 opportunity for both of us to work together. Clearly, there's need for us to work together, yeah. and, and that's what we're doing. It's not a competition. I mean, each, not at all. each has its own value Absolutely. in a community like Absolutely. this. Absolutely. Uh, and, and so how has it been? How has it been you now being a receiving hospital, the accreditation? Congratulations yeah. on that. Well, well, we've been ramping up, and we've been becoming very busy. Um, um Increasing beds, increasing services, bringing in new people, um, commissioning new equipment, and and um, and building the team, and building the services, and building the hospital over the last um, few months. Yeah. Well, you're you're also been uh, been a great contributor to the community, which a lot of people look for when they see something new come into Guam. They want to see how that uh, facility gives back. And today, GRMC is about to uh, present a check. Yes, we are. Well, we're going to make a $100,000 donation to FESPAC, and, and we're very excited to be part of this, this, this incredible celebration, really, of the arts and culture of Guam and of the Pacific, and, it, and it's a great honor for Guam to be hosting, and it's a great honor for GMC to be part of this whole a hundred, event. $100,000. Now, that, uh, that's not small change there. No, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's actually part of a, a bigger program, the Percent for the Arts program. Um, which is um, a contribution that's required by law mm -hmm. for organizations that um, are, 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 are in the social sectors and, and are beneficiaries of, of the qualifying certificate. But for us, it's really much more than compliance with the law. Mm -hmm. um, we all know that the arts have this incredible healing capacity, this incredible way to keep people well. And um, through this partnership with, with Kaha and the Percent for the Arts program, we're really able to integrate and harness the ability of arts to do this this, this re um, connection mm. with, you know, what makes us human. 
and 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 as, as that connection is made, the, the the physical body responds positively, and this is not sort of hocus pocus or or you know gobbledygook or yeah. or um, you, you, you say that the aesthetics of the hospital contributes to a person. That's that, but that's state. only part of it. That's only part of it. There are there are arts programs that we want to bring into the hospital. Um, art therapy for for children and, and cancer patients. Um, um, music therapy for stroke patients, mm. um, dance therapy as part of our physical therapy program, um, and really, really respond to the person as a whole, and not just not just as you know a, a collection of symptoms or a collection of body parts, and, yeah. and really accelerate and promote healing that way. Can performing arts be a p- performing Absolute arts therapy be a part of absolutely, that? Absolutely, con- absolutely, absolutely. So, so um, huh. the the program doesn't just cover visual arts, but just but also covers performing arts. Oh, okay. Are you on a track to do that? Yes. Soon. Yes. Yes, we are. So, so like I said, this is part of a broader uh, yeah. program, Percent for the Arts. the The total donation is, is quite large; it's a million and a half dollars. Yeah. So that and and that was a that was a mandated percentage of what what your investment was. Yes, it? Yeah. it was. It was. It's one percent of the construction costs, and and um, we wanted to make it meaningful, though we didn't want it to be just about, you know buying pieces of art and, and, and decorating the hospital that way, although that's important too, that the hospital ha- has, a, has, a, has a feel mm-hmm. and, ha- and has, a, has an appeal that way. We wanted to, like I said, be able to, to create programs that, that allow us to harness the, 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 this, this magical ability of the art to heal and, and, and make people well. Yeah. And that's what we're going to be able to do in partnership with Kaha. What which of the specialty care units uh, has been the most useful uh, in this community so far? I know you built uh, the surgical suites up there, well, and of course, we have specialty surgery. Um, we we actually think about sur- uh, sort of three flagship programs, which, which coincide with the three biggest killers on Guam. So cardiovascular care. So we have a cat lab. We have began c- um, cardiothoracic surgery. So we really have been able to put together a complete um, program for people with heart attacks, whereas before, you know, you know, the best we could do was was stabilize the patient and 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 hope the patient makes it through a through a three hour four hour plane ride to get to the Philippines for for actual intervention. We're now able to deliver those services on island. Stroke program. This is another program that where time is uh, really of the essence because mm-hmm. you want to intervene quickly before you know brain cells are getting killed and and so we're able to do that with with our neurologist and a neurosurgeon and our um and and cancer care you know um so important that there be comprehensive cancer care because because cancer care takes a long time and you don't want people to be to be stranded you know in 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 the philippines or somewhere in the mainland u.s away from their families while they're dealing with this terrible disease burden we, we want to be able to to deliver world-class cancer care on guam and that's what we're doing and th- you're pr- you've been providing the service yeah, yes and we have and and how has it been received are you finding absolutely, more patients staying absolutely on guam? absolutely um I, th- I think there's a there, there's an appreciation that that um a, a certain level of care, uh, much of the care actually needs to be delivered at home in situ, and that's what and that's what we've been that's what we've been able to to to, to do mm. to deliver care, specialty care, quality specialty care, world class quality specialty care on Guam for Guam. So it is still cheaper to stay on Guam than it is to find accommodations or travel. Well, to the well, 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 cheap is. And value is really not just about you know the the cost of care. You mm-hmm. need to think about the whole the whole experience of care and the whole episode of care and how much more more healing and how less disruptive it is to do it at home. Yeah, especially no, for diseases such as such yeah. as cardiovascular um, disease or cancer. Yeah, that's that, that's kind of what I meant. That yes. people would tend to spend uh, more if they knew they could do it on their own terms in their own uh, in their own comforts. And uh, all for all these years, people have been traveling off island to seek right. the specialty care. And part of the problem has been being away from loved ones Absolutely. and not having the support uh, of home. Uh, we we have been watching GRMC more and more. Uh, on, I've been seeing the ads on television uh, about the care that people have received, emergency care. Mm-hmm. Uh, are you seeing the, the emergency oh services yes, increase too? Yes, our emergency room is very, very busy. You're yeah. in the zone. That's it's the uh, yeah, most that's populated right. it's area. It's very, very busy. So ambulances are coming in all the time. People yeah. are walking in all the time. And, and um, 
the, the people there are, are doing incredible work really are you life saving work really yeah are, are you are you getting slammed that is it that kind of uh, well there are certain there are certain times when you know we've actually had to go and divert because we are our, 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 our um emergency room beds are just full and so we need to work with GMH in the, on those situations and figure out how we can best take care of the patients that need to be taken care of given the services that we are able to deliver and we are the, in many situations we are the only area that um, the hospital that can deliver the services. Well also, also with the acceptance of a lot of the insurance as well you're pretty much taking everybody yes. and federal and civilian employees and uh, so and with the JCO accreditation uh, that do you think that also increased your market absolutely absolutely um, um, so private insurance is one thing uh, Medicare Medicaid um, with with a, with a CMS and Joint Commission certification th those numbers have, have come up significantly and, and those are the biggest populations who need care on island and, and we're seeing them absolutely growing every day yeah uh, we still have an issue with at least one of the private insurance companies that was kind of holding out I thought was the issue they were holding out uh, for this accreditation has there been an opening that's a that's a large another insurance provider that has a it large is, customer base. Um, we, we've, we haven't been able to come back to the table. Um, you know, we're always open um, to, to resume negotiations, um, but I guess you'd have, we'd have to ask them what you know what, what's what's up? What's what's up about are, right? What about the military? Because you're also close to Anderson uh, Air Force Base, and I know that they have a military hospital here. But uh, do, do you do people st you have Tricare as well? Yes, right? yes, yeah. we do, and and we collaborate very closely with Naval Hospital, mm -hmm. um, particularly for these three specialty services. So so neuro neuro neurology and neurovascular care, um, cardiovascular care, and um, cancer services. Well, we're we're seeing their patients and taking care of their patients all the time. Yeah. What's the next? Next big thing, uh, you know. Kevin sends out these news releases about the next big thing, and they're usually, yes. you know, some pretty remarkable, uh, uh, you know, services that are provided. What's the next big yes, thing? Yes, well, well, it, well, it's really ramping up on on our on our core programs, as well as really strengthening um, cr our chronic care programs. So, for example, um, diabetes is is a, mm. a big killer on Guam, and um, it's so important that particularly for chronic disease, that we focus on prevention and early detection. And so we want to engage with the community in, in, in delivering those education programs, those um, information programs, so that we don't get to the point where, you know, the dialysis is so devastating. Yeah. Are, are, you, go are you in the renal care business or is that something? Well, we have dialysis services oh, okay. um, and um, inpatient services, but you know, as much as possible, you don't want to get to the point where you're needing dialysis, where you're needing um, advanced wound care services, which we do offer, by the way. Um, but but really, the best buy as far as as far as chronic disease is concerned is, is prevention, and and we need to do. We need we GMC when we Guam need to do a better job at at getting the information out there. That that there is a way to to, to, to to turn around and turn the corner on this on this terrible disease burden and, and yeah. so that, that that's one of our focuses. Now, uh, well, pre prevention and the preventative maintenance is yes. a, the education campaign is the crux of every uh, healthcare provider, it seems. And so, how are you starting like an education campaign? Are you thinking? Well, we have we have you know we talk about. JMC, uh, where the patient does partner, and that's much more the for us than a than a slogan. Really, we we have a very robust um, patient education um, center in the hospital, where where patients can get information, and this is visual information. This is this is um, actionable information, and this is this is important information mm. that that um, that um, people can get about you know how to stay well even despite. Uh, the burden of chronic disease, and then we're also going out to the communities, engaging with with the NCD c um, consortium, and and uh, and um, uh, other organizations like that to to make sure that the information gets out there, you know, in every way that we can. Yeah, it's so important. With FESPAC and yes. and thousands of delegates coming to Guam, uh, all of the resources that need to be made available for in the event, God forbid, in the event that something uh, catastrophic could happen. Uh, are you? Uh, Tell me about whether or not you've been in partnership with the government of Guam on planning for that. Yeah, yes, yes, we are, and we were. Um, there actually is a, an organization of the three hospitals, um, Naval Hospital, um, GMH, and GMC, and we've been working together for for many months now. You know, planning, um, doing contingency planning on, 
you know, the what ifs of, of all these people coming on island and, and, how, and how we're able to deal with that and, and respond to that. Um, and um, so, so that's happening. And we, we're engaging each other and we're engaging with Gub Guam to, to make sure that we're prepared and we're ready. And, and it'll be a good experience. Yeah. It, uh, t- can you talk to me a little bit about your lab, the lab services that you provide and the extent of what you can do there uh, to, to quickly diagnose if there is something that needs to be... Uh, said to the public? Well, we, we have a, a very modern, very robust laboratory services. Um, many of the services are still being ramped up, so we're still working in partnership with with um, our, our, our um, uh, DLS mm-hmm. uh, partner in, in Hawaii for, for some of the services. But, but as, as we come into to the next months, we will be able to be doing more and more of those diagnostic services on island. Would there be, yeah, is there is there a possibility that GRMC could be a go-to lab? Would Absolutely. that facility be? But, but, well, that is, that is definitely the, the end game, and, and the end game is not that far into the future. Um, and um, we we're ramping up for that because mm-hmm. because there is absolute need for for very for very basic and also very sophisticated laboratory services on island. Yeah, do, do, would you would you have to be certified or sanctioned or something by the CDC? Is that ultimately what you could do? Um, e- eventually, the plan is to to be a reference laboratory and mm-hmm. and um, e- even working with the military very closely in in providing um, laboratory services and blood bank services, which are very sorely needed on the island as well. Yeah. Well, the good uh, uh, event that's coming up that's fun for us all is your first annual. It's the Bubble Fun <laughs> Run. Are you going to be out there uh, romping in the bubbles not, at all? But, no, but, but a lot of our people will be. So this is it's a Saturday, this Saturday, April 16, and, and, and it's a 5K run, and it's, and it's running from... From Ipau Beach all the way to Fujita Road and back. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I know we're expecting over over a hundred people there. And yeah, and, and it's it's your first run. I think it's going to it be. Is. It'll be pretty fun to watch at least. The uh, uh, Christine was telling us that there's going to be a, like a small bubble barrage uh, <laughs> on the way out, and then coming back, you're going to be right. absolutely bathed in in bubbles right. uh, as you're coming back on the finish line. So uh, that event is taking place. The proceeds go to what? Uh, is that a, a, a relay for life? Oh, the Guam Cancer Care folks and Relay for Life. And Relay for Life. So that uh, you guys have a team then. That we do. You, you've, uh, is, do you, have you had a team yes. in the past couple of years? Yes, okay. yes we have. All right. Well, okay. the, uh, everybody is in Relay for Life mode for sure. Uh, Guam Cancer Care being the recipients of that. This is on Saturday. That is the 16th. It starts at EPAO down to Vegeta. It's a quick turnaround. Uh, come back early in the morning, and it's bubble fun for everyone. And bring your bring your kids. Uh, mm-hmm. Margaret, it's always good to see you, even when I run into you. Thanks oh, for likewise. Thank you so much for having me. No, it's my pleasure. We hope to talk to you again soon. Kevin, thanks for hooking this up.